What's up, welcome to Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of La Seraphim's debut album, Unforgiven. Yes, this is coming out exactly a year to the date since La Seraphim's debut single album, Fearless, came out. And ever since then, this past year, La Seraphim just has been on absolute fire. So I was very excited to get into this record here. Um, 2022 was a gigantic year for K pop rookies, specifically female. Uh, K-pop groups with Ive and New Jeans and La Seraphim. It's so crazy that La Seraphim and New Jeans are both under the hype umbrella. They're both under the same label, occupying two very different spaces, and yet both finding like crazy success extremely fast. Um, I think La Seraphim, you know, maybe not quite as mainstream as New Jeans, at least not right now, still really rocketed up once they followed up Fearless with their second single album, Anti-Fragile last fall and really just a bunch of songs off those two you know eps they only put out a handful of songs but a bunch of those songs really took off with fearless and impurities and of course anti-fragile which is like a really monstrous song one of the best k-pop songs of last year i think what's also quite interesting about this group and probably speaks to why they've been so successful so quickly is that even though they're like a rookie new group some of their members were more experienced you know sakura and chaewon were in a previous K-pop group in their past, even though they're young. So there was a lot of experience brought to this group. And also, you know, uh, Hitman Bang, you know, the founder of, of Hybe, who also produces, he took like a clear hands-on approach to crafting the sound of La Seraphim. And um, you can tell that they're really invested in this group. So I was really excited to get you know, the next the next iteration of this group. And we get Unforgiven, which is 13 tracks, but it's really only seven new tracks. A bunch of the songs from last year are back again, like Fearless and Blue Flame and Anti-Fragile and Impurity. So like, if you're new to the group, just put this on and you'll kind of catch up really fast. So I'll just focus on like those seven new tracks that we have here. Um, you know, it starts off with uh, Burn the Bridge, which is I think kind of like a interesting like interlude intro track it's like really spoken word with english and korean and yeah it still has like this like tempo build up and this guitar kind of picks up like towards the end and in general like the la seraphim brand of i think it's like a female empowerment thing right la seraphim is an anagram for uh was it for for uh, fearless right and you know since then it's like i'm fearless i'm anti-fragile i'm unforgiven like there this has been their their thing and they're really kind of hyping it up uh, f- from here. And then right off the bat, you get that title track, Unforgiven, with the guitar lick from Nile Rodgers. And that's just, unsurprisingly, like most K-pop title tracks, a big, big banger. Kind of fun because I think Jaywon gives you a bit of hip-hop, which doesn't really usually do that. Um, but I think what's so cool about her as a you know k-pop artist k-pop figurehead is that she just has tremendous presence you know obviously she's a huge figure of all the music videos and the choreography but like she i think has just a really confident uh performance style and with a song like unforgiven where she's giving you like more high tempo like rapping style really for the first time and w- with this group thus sound thus far i think that was really fun just to really a hard hard banger right off the bat and then god i was thrown for a loop with the next song no return into the unknown that's just a bop man that is a has like 80s like drum tempo an incredibly catchy chorus you got like these heavy horns coming in that like i'm not low-key vocal breakdown but then right after that chaewon's famous high note comes in like i think that song is incredible and really steals the I think steals the shine from Unforgiven. Usually, K-pop title tracks are like the big, the big banger, the big uh, showstopper. And this one certainly, and Unforgiven certainly is. But I think No Return is just a crazy fun song. I really love that one. Uh, yeah, just, and in general, like the production on Unforgiven is what really surprises me. Like if you think about their past work, it was you know I think pretty wide ranging already you know you had really like stripped down slower songs like impurities alongside more up-tempo like traditional k-pop bangers like anti-fragile they take it a step further with unforgiven because the production is just really all over the place you know you have uh track three of the new songs eve psych and the bluebeard's wife that is just like a straight like electro like drum and bass song 
And then, you know, the last track, Fire in the Belly, is like a Latin pop song. There's such a wide range of production on here. Later on, we have Fear Not, which is like a straight-up guitar ballad, you know, the singing really uh, livened up on that one. But yeah, just overall, I was quite impressed just with how lively I thought this whole record was. Going back to Eve Syke and the Bluebeard's Wife, you know, just the the boom boom part is just so so catchy and then the vocals it's like a call and response type vibe i think those three songs in a row on forgiven no return and eve like that is a switch up after switch up after switch up which i think just speaks to this song you know the members are really capable of doing different sounds and doing different types of performance sometimes shining over the beat sometimes letting the beat kind of ride and gliding that's what makes this group so fun to me and again like it's cool how Hybe is moving these days where like all their little sub labels have their own focus, right? Like uh, Ador does New Jeans, Source Music does La Seraphim. Like they're all doing their own thing, all have their own lanes. And it's just kind of wild to see like the K-pop rookie scene really like rise up. So I'm very curious to see exactly how big Unforgiven gets and perhaps the Unforgiven title track gets. And yeah, this group is just a rocket ship. Incredibly exciting. So, uh, La Seraphim, I'm a huge fan. How did you feel about Unforgiven compared to the past two albums? Uh, and for more music reviews, more K-pop reviews, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.